Okay, is that all done? Now, let us all go to on-screen takeoff and create a new bid. And name it whatever you want. Excavation 2. And done. Select plans later. And what I'm doing now, I'm going to go ahead and close this off. What I'm doing now is that I am going to this tab, the cover sheet tab. Right? And then I need to add that image that I just downloaded from Canvas. Okay? So do you guys see this icon here? Click on that icon and go ahead and locate that file. Easier for me to It's in class, in class exercise is the name of it. <coughs> Guys, in case, because this might be the case for you or it may, not, it may not be the case. In case on screen takeoff has already added that blank page, page one, let's go ahead and get rid of it. Let's go ahead and delete, delete that file. Okay, so what I'm going to do is that this page one, I'm going to go ahead and delete this, and we're good. I'm going to hit OK. So you should have that. Sound good? Now, do you guys recall the fantastic cross-section method, the grid-based method? We're just going to discuss that briefly and see how this is going to be helpful using on-screen takeoff, how it can help us to conduct that, all right? Now, before doing anything else, let me tell you two things. I need your attention. First of all, on-screen takeoff is not made for excavation takeoff. So what we're doing now is that we're trying our best to squeeze something out of it. It's not made for excavation, on-screen takeoff, okay? Now, let's see how we do it. Now, before we actually do anything, let's have a little bit of uh, brainstorming. How do you guys think that we can improve that laborious thing using on-screen data? What do you think is, the, is, is best? Now, you guys remember that, be, like before, so in estimating one, we used to do this, right? Do you guys remember this? And then we used to say, what about this? Then we actually focus on the grid and read plan elevation and existing elevation and the, then we go from there, right? Now, how can we improve this with on-screen takeoff? Because in, the, in, in this situation, in this scenario that you guys are looking, it's not much of help if you agree with me. Now, here's the idea. Again, do you guys remember our conversation in estimating one that the grids do not have to be squares? They can take any shape? Can we take advantage of that? Sure. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create a, an area condition. And I'm gonna name it cut one, and I hope, I'm gonna hope for the best. It may be field. I don't know. All right, so I'm going to name um, the condition <laughs> cut one. So the type would be excavation. And the layer, I'm going to also name the layer cut one because there might be times that I need to. Um, adjust this, right? 
Now go ahead and set the second quantity to volume. Okay? Set the second quantity to volume and change it from cubic feet to cubic yard. So it's, it should look like this. The condition property should look like this. And keep in mind, this will have to change. Okay? This will have to change. And I'm going to show you how to change that, right? In a moment. But for now, let's just hit OK. Once you have it set like this, one, let's hit OK and go to the drawings. Sound good? Hmm? Oh. See, I'm getting old now. Okay, what is the first thing we do when you open our pool table? We do nothing but. There we go. Let's do it. Let us go to edit. We calculate scale, and I see a length of 350 feet. So I'm going to punch in what? 350 and two zeros. Correct? Also, do not close that window. Go ahead and set the line of 350. Once this is done, hit OK. Now, what's the next thing you need to do? So first thing is to calculate scale. The next thing is to check it, to validate scale. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to actually click on that dimension thing. And try to validate it. It's very small, but mine says 300 feet 10 inches, which is pretty accurate with the resolution we have on this drawing. Sound good? Yeah. All right, now this is what I'm going to do. <clears throat> Maybe just a little bit of uh, background here. You guys remember this square represented where the building is going to sit, right? And you also said that for this square and every point within this square, the plan elevation is going to be the same thing, right? Because this is supposed to be flat. And that same number is what? Right, 104. So what I'm going to do is that now I'm going to actually begin with this. I'm, I am going to create an area for this rectangle. Right? Can I do that? Sure, you can have any shape. It doesn't have to be four corner. It doesn't have to be a square. It, it can be any shape. Right, so, so I'm taking this shape as one grid. Now let's look at, let us look at these points. Sound good? So I have, I have a square that looks like this, right? And for this corner, let me begin with this corner. For this corner here, what do I have? Plan elevation. Do you guys agree that plan elevation for all the corners is what? 104? So let me put this 104 for plan elevation everywhere. Now the existing elevation, for these two lines, for these two points, for these two points, the existing elevation is going to be what? It's going to be also 104. How do I know that? 
right? 104, here and there, correct? So then I am going to have for this one a 104 and here also a 104. Sound good? How about this last one? I have to interpolate. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say that this point here, this point here is located between 104 and 103 and it's very close to 104. So let's actually say 103.7. So this is the existing and this one is the plan. Fair enough? Now let us go ahead and open that Excel file. Now guys, I need your attention for a second from this point on. You can do one of the two things, and they're both good. One way, you guys remember this file, right? For each grid, it was last semester, right? One way to go about the calculations is that you put your plan elevation and ATC elevations here, right? And you also need to give me a grid area. Where do I get that from? Actually, take it. Right? For that condition, aren't you being able to right now you know that grid area, don't you? So one way about this is the is for me to do this. I say plan elevation was 104 all the way across. 104, 104, and 104, right? And the existing elevations <coughs> was 104, 104, and 103.7. Right? So this, this grid then needs scale. And this is the average height of it. It's all calculated automatically, right? Now, one last thing I want to do is that I need to go to on screen takeoff and read this number. The square footage. Mine says 603.97. Is yours close? 552. It could be some uh, scale thing, but 552 isn't, I mean, I'm not advocating it, but it's not bad, at least for an, an in-class activity, okay? Okay, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take this 603.97 and put it here as my grid. 603, what was it? 0.97 would be my grid area, correct? So you go ahead and put your own grid area in this one. Didn't have to be mine. Sound good? Now, so, so from this point on, and with respect to the grid area and also the average height of excavation, you now know the cubic yards of excavation, or PL, in this case. Was this clear? So this is one way. This is one way to go about excavation. So you define your grids in on screen table, right? And you shape them however you want. And keep in mind, your grids now can have Three corners, four corners, up to five corners, don't go over that. Okay? And then those corners, they're going to have plan elevation, existing elevation. But now the good thing is that you can follow these topography lines. So you don't have to do a lot of interpolations. You see what's going on. Now, what, I mean, this is going to be, um, let's do another one. Let's create an, another area condition. Yeah, 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 yeah. And put 10%, 90%, whatever, doesn't matter. So, so one way was what I just told you, right? Can I think of another way? Can we think of another way? 
Let me also tell you another way of doing this. Do you guys see this number, 0 0.05? What is that? We all agree that that's the average height of expiration. Can I take that into my arm state default? Let's do that. So next in, it would be, I'm going to double click on the condition I just created. And here for the thickness, what do I have? I have 0 0.05, correct? 0 0.05, and I'm going to hit OK. And this is gi giving me 0 cubic yards. Sound good? Oh, you go to the takeoff tab. So currently you're at the image tab. Go to the takeoff tab and right click arbitrarily on one of the numbers. And it says show decimal places. Right, so when you right click on the numbers, it shows show decimal places. And I just set that to two decimals. That all good? That's a good point. Oh, sure, because of the reason, right? Because here I mistakenly put 0 0.05 inches, whereas I had to put 0 0.05 feet. Um, yeah, there ought to be, there ought to be what better ways Nope. Okay, 0 0.05 feet. Is that 0 0.6 inches? Now it gives you the, the exact same thing. That's a, that's a weird thing. It doesn't allow decimal, it never occurred to me. So it turns out that on-screen takeoff does not allow decimals for feet. It does allow it for inches. In feet, yeah. Okay, now, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create another condition, an, an area condition again. Um, and I'm going to name it cut to and actually do the very same things. Now this time for this second one, I'm going to select this. Not yet.
Okay? So this time, you can see I have selected this to be my grid. How many corners does it have? It has four corners. And now this time, the, the good thing about this is that actually every corner is sitting on a topography line. Meaning that my plan elevations are going to be still 104 because it's within the building limits. And the existing elevations on this side is going to be 105 and the other side is going to be 104. I'm going to go back to my Excel file. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take all of this, copy it, and paste it right below it. Now here I can name this cut one and name the other one cut two so it goes well with my Excel file, with my on-screen takeoff file. Okay, so plan elevations won't change, but for the existing elevations, keep in mind, we're gonna have four corners. So for the existing elevations, I'm gonna have 105 on two ends and 104 on the other two ends. And is this clear why? Do you guys see this line here? The left side is actually sitting on the existing elevation of 105, and the right side is sitting on an existing elevation of 104, correct? So here, from my Excel file, I'm going to have the height of 0.33 feet, agreed? 0.33 feet is how many inches? Four inches, right? Well, then in this case, this happens to be good because I already had four inches in my condition. Now, for me to check it, I'm just I'm also gonna take this number here. My number is 3,641 square feet. I'm gonna take this number and paste it here. How do I get one? All the cells are not, they don't all have the, the formula. They so you gotta click it. Yeah. yeah, what I do is this. What I, I think best way to, to save, to copy this is this. I'll actually select all these cells, control C them, and then control V, because the the default paste actually will paste all the, well, in the formula. At least in the cut column, the, the end statement is only in the first two cells. It actually doesn't go all the way down all the way down. So it's zero. Oh, okay. So why don't we do that then? All right, so it turns out that there was a bug in the file. So on the cut cells, on the cut column here, the equation, the formula doesn't go all the way down. It's selected and drag it down. You know how to do that? So select these two, and from the right, bottom right corner, drag it down. So it pastes the formula. Yes, sir. So you have to, here, 
Is is that your question that you don't see this cubic yards there? Go to go to take off. Jonathan, what is it? So I'm going to actually also paste this value of a square feet in my Excel sheet. So this says 44.96, and this one also says the same thing, right? Guys, is this clear? So part of what I want from you for that grid method is to take your top side with reasonable grids, go one by one, either the first approach or the second approach with the extension. <coughs> No, no, no. Well, the difference is actually from, the difference is in the workup sheet that you supply. In the first approach, this will be your workup sheet. Right. In the second approach, you use this to calculate the average height and then punch the average height into your arms when you take off, and then that will be. Just make sure that you, if, if you use the takeoff tab, Make sure that you apply your swell and shrinkage factor because it's built into this file. It's not necessarily the case. I think this is easier, but that's my perception. You might think otherwise. Sound good? Yes, sir. Um, for on screen takeoff, what I do is that I create cuts and I create fields separately. So this way, if your sale is a cut, categorize it within a cut. So, so here, right? So in the type, if you actually have all, have them all as type of cut, right? And then have fields to be the type of field. When you go to the takeoff tab, it's going to lump them all together. So it gives you a, a summation of everything. As long as they have the same cut. Does that make sense? Yeah. So so well in reality this is a field. And I have to rename this to a field. And this one will be a cut. Does that make sense? And then once you add your cuts and fills, it actually is going to categorize it right underneath this. And in the takeoff tab, it's going to give you a nice summation of it. Sound good? <coughs> Any questions? Um, yeah. Do you only care about the building part or do you want to do the whole project? No, the whole project. Yeah. Again. Do you guys see do you guys see the level of accuracy I'm seeking though? I'm not looking at so building aside, for the entire job site I'm looking at you should be looking at probably between twenty to thirty weeks. Not like two hundred. Right? <laughs> no, I'm probably gonna deduct some points. <laughs> Is this is this clear? Because I'm going to switch to concrete now. Yes, sir. Yeah. No. No. Um, what I want you guys to do is the grid section. The strip for these is continuous putting excavation, right? That's the only thing you need to do, correct? We talked about that for the last time, right? So the cross section, back field, spread footings and continuous footings, and then you have to tell me how much material must be all the way or must be borrowed, because that has to be priced in as well. 
right? So four items, right? Keep in mind that backfill thing will actually be backfill plus protections. So when you go to RSVs, you need to give me five things. Total amount of cut, total amount of peel, right? Compaction, and then hold. These four must be plus. How do you know how that's definitely one thing. Another thing that I have not received an RFI for, which is peculiar, is that do you know your soil and shrinkage factors? So somebody submitted an RFI. Right? No, no, that would not be an RFI because what I'm asking is to go to the site limits as opposed as opposed to the building. That makes sense. So I want you to include the site the site excavation in your working site. But again, don't I don't want you to get so carried away by coming back with like two hundred things. Keep it reasonable. Oh. Is that all good? All right.